Hello and welcome back. In the previous section you learned how to interact with the objects in your scene. This section of the course is dedicated to enhancing the virtual environment and in this first lecture we are going to have a look at physics and collisions. I'm still using the event set and the super hands components. And below you can see the customized ground and the objects in our scene listed in a left to right order. So the red box, the green and the yellow spheres and the blue box. Ok, let's get started. To use physics in A-Frame you need to install A-Frame extras created by Don McCurdy. That includes a series of add-ons and helpers among which there is the A-Frame physics system package. So to install A-Frame extras as usual you can either copy and paste the script to your page or use the npm installation. And please note that at the time of this recording we are going to use version 3.13.1 and the next release of A-Frame Extras will not contain physics anymore as it will be a separate repo. If you take a look at Don McCurdy's uh, GitHub page you'll see that actually it is already a separate repo and you'll find another script for the installation here. But it seems that to get some of the system configuration properties to work, currently you still need to use the script in the A-Frame Extras repo. I can just assume that things are going to change in the future. So back to brackets, I'm including it in the head of my HTML file. And then I attach the physics system to the A-Scene element, which is a what will handle the logic in our scene. For freely moving objects you can attach the dynamic dash body component to any entity that contains a mesh, for example the green sphere. And you can see how this is immediately affected by the gravity, that by default is set to the real world value that is minus 9.8. So if I change this into a positive value, say 0.8, the green sphere will fly up in the sky like a balloon. But for this lecture I'm leaving the gravity to its default value. And then I attach the static dash body component to our ground. So the green sphere can collide with it and will not fall passing through it. I'll reload the page. Nice. You can modify the bounciness of the physics system with the restitution property. That has a default value of a 0.3. So if I set this to 0.7, you'll see the green sphere bouncing more. And now I'm attaching the dynamic body component to the yellow sphere as well. So I can show you the linear damping property that has a default value of 0.01 and that you can modify to control an object's resistance to movement. So I'm setting this value to 0.05 for the green sphere and 0.5 for the yellow sphere and when I reload the page you can see their different behaviors and response to the bounciness that we set in the physics system for our scene. Ok, I'm going to attach the grabbable reaction component to both the spheres. So I can move them around and show you the angular damping property that you can modify to control an object's resistance to rotation. I'll put this into practice with the yellow sphere and again, the higher the value, the greater the object's resistance. So if I change the default value of 0.01 to 0.3 and compare the two spheres' behaviors, You can see that the yellow sphere now responds quite differently to rotation and inertia. 
When you aim to give an object a specific behavior, bear in mind that its response to the physics system depends on how you combine all these property values. So you'll have to go through kind of a trial and error process until you are happy with the final result. Ok, let's move on. And here in our scene you can also notice that at the moment the two spheres collide with each other. And if we want them to collide with the two boxes as well, we need to attach either the dynamic dash body or the static dash body component to them. I start with the blue box and attach the static body component. Now, this doesn't mean that the blue box cannot move at all. Indeed, you can animate objects to which you attach the static body component. And as a demonstration, I'm adding some code I had already prepared. Therefore, the static body component simply makes an object unaffected by gravity and collisions, and most importantly makes it possible for the other objects in your scene to collide with it. Speaking of collisions, we can also start talking about body shapes. And by default, the body components will attempt to find an appropriate shape to fit your objects or models. And they can be a box, a sphere, a cylinder. And you can see in our scene how they have been correctly assigned to the two spheres and the blue box. If you need, you can also change the body shape for an object using the shape property and fill in its value with one of those shapes, for example, the sphere. And with this shape, you can then use the sphere radius property to set a numeric value, say 1 meter, so a diameter of 2 meters, that is twice our box size. And you can see how this impacts the collisions with the blue box now. When collisions happen, an entity emits the collide event. Therefore, if I attach the event set component to create an event called color, and fill the underscore event property with the collide value, so that the blue box color will change to a darker blue. We get this nice result when an object collides with it, or more precisely with its body shape in this case. Moreover, if you want, you can also create your own custom body shape. For example, using an A-box primitive as a child entity of the object you'd like to enable collisions with. So if I nest it inside our red box, giving it the same red color, and set its opacity to 0.2, I can scale it up to the size that I like or need, say 2, 3, 1.5, and then adjust its position to make it sit on the ground. So for the y-axis, I have to use a value that is half the value in the scale component, therefore 1.5, minus the value the children entity is inheriting from its parent, that is 0.5. And so when I set the y-axis to 1, the custom body shape now sits perfectly on the ground and has an exact height of 3 meters. Then I attach the static body component to it. So the green and the yellow spheres can collide with it. And finally, once you are happy with the result, you can set the visible HTML attribute to false. This technique can be useful especially when using custom 3D models to which you attach a dynamic body component, because the body components can also set the shape property value to hull, which creates kind of a shrink wrap around your model, and depending on the geometry of your objects, this may have some performance impact on your scene.
Okay, before concluding this lecture, I'm going to show you another property of the dynamic body component, that is the mass. And the name speaks for itself, so you can modify the mass of an object that by default is 5. I'm setting this value to 1 for the green sphere, and 10 for the yellow sphere. Then I reload the page and test the collisions between the two spheres so you can see the result. Which really makes a lot of difference and completes our perception of these objects and their weights. So, this is how you can use physics and collisions in A-Frame to enhance the virtual environment for your custom scenes, and I'll see you in the next lecture.